time attorneys hear about this, this is, um, I think that was something that shocks a lot of people because it really is day, num you know, day number one of law school kind of stuff. Yeah. Like I remember Emily, I sat down with Emily D. Baker and Emily said, she was like, she goes, I was never in client settlement stuff. I never did plaintiff's law. I never had money coming in. She goes, and there would be times when I was like, oh my gosh, has something happened? She goes, they beat it into you in school. She goes to the point that it's just, it, it's surprising. And that, yeah, one accusation like that would typically get a lawyer investigated, potentially suspended, maybe disbarred, a single one. And yeah, he had more than 200 by the time he was suspended and, you know, and disbarred. Right. And that it went on for just like you said, Jake, like it started in the 80s and just like this had been going on forever. You're like, how, you know, it makes you wonder, like, you know, and it's really neither here nor there, but like, okay, so if Erica wasn't on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, if he wasn't on, like, would we be here? Would we have a housewife and hustler? It's still a very interesting story, right? We have documentaries all the time about people that are not in the public eye, but it does make you wonder, which is neither here nor there, because we have two and they're both great. But would we be here? Would we have had this? It's the benefit of having a free media, of having of having a you know a free press in this country. Is that some of what we do is putting pressure on the systems of power in order to make sure that whether that means that the oversight is actually oversight. But I do think that in some cases, the public being aware of what's going on is and can be the only thing that keeps the system in check. Um, and I think journalism plays a really great role in that, which is why we're very proud that this has come out under a collaboration with two really big journalism companies to have ABC News and to have the LA Times working together is a great synergy moment. But you also then know that the reporting is based in journalism and that that is a huge, huge, important thing, especially when you're looking at something of this level of this systemic kind of potential failure. I think you know, the real housewives of it, the reality television side certainly expands the audience and maybe the interest. But I do think the story um, and the alleged, you know, the allegations against Tom are so wild and so, um, it, you know, it goes so deep in terms of kind of the, the structure that supported him. I would like to think there's there would be a documentary, you know, even without some of the reality television component, because he was a major name in law, a major name across the country, cases all over the world. Um, so I think it does rise to that level. Right. And I think to your point, Kinez, like, I think because it's rooted in journalism, that's why this documentary is so, because look, if it wasn't and it was on like some other network, it would just be tabloid fodder, which would be routed in truths, right? But I think you know, you've been at Nightline, you guys, like, I think that's what lends legitimacy to this. And I think why people are flocking to it so much. I appreciate it. It does. I mean, like people seem to, yeah, people seem to be genuinely interested. I think that's what struck us maybe after the first one, Jake, and you, you can probably like, talk about this too, but after the first one, and I think even more so at the second, like when we released the first one, we knew that people would be interested because they'd shown interest you know, online about, you know, whether you're looking in the comments on something or whether you're checking social media, we knew people were interested because obviously Erica was involved, you know, Erica had been, had been linked to the story, you know, she had been linked to lawsuits. But I think what we were the most surprised by from the first one was just how much people were really interested in what was, what was going on beyond Erica, what right. was happening that was, again, past all the glitz and the glamour behind the velvet rope, so to speak, what is actually happening when you get to the nitty gritty of what the accusations are. And I think even on this second one, the response so far has been that people really want to dive into all the details. They want to know what's going on with the bar. They want to know what's going on with the bankruptcy. They want all that information beyond even just the surface stuff. And I also think it just helps because like I said, there is so much out there, you know, not to like, insult any audience, but I just think it helps when it's all pulled together in a nice hour and a half documentary of like, okay, well that I didn't understand like that, but now I learned something. Well, you know that, I mean, like, obviously you do this a lot and there are some, there are great places, especially inside of the social media sphere and, and podcasting where you guys break down everything as it's happening. But yeah, to see it like taken and put kind of together in one place, I think 
gives people the ability to look at the kind of like the big scope all at once in a way that we're so used to getting information a little bit as it happens that kind of helps pull it all together and you get the big, big picture. Did you guys learn anything about Erica from this second one? I think the relationship with with Jim and and Evan being, you know, sitting down, Evan Borges sitting down and talking to us about kind of like the behind the scenes, behind the scenes, because obviously she's on a reality TV show. They do show some of this stuff, but very seldom do you get to see her legal team sit down and talk about stuff that they have not talked about to date. And I think really getting in like how they break down what the last couple of years have been like and all the things that they're doing behind the scenes, I think is really fascinating stuff. Yeah, I, I exactly. I think it's the perspective of what the last few years have been like for her through the eyes of people who are with her and close to her. Right. Do you, right, because I mean, they, you know, some of the things they said were like, you're like, okay, I could see that in a different light at this point. Jim talks about the money. He talks about how and who helped her get out of the marriage at the time uh, and how they talk about the steps that were taken, kind of the legal fights that they're facing, their approach to everything. Again, I think for people who are interested, it's it's genuinely something you can't see anyplace else. And I think the meeting with the former clients is a side of Erica, maybe that people will find surprising and or refreshing. You know, it's it's not on the reality show. It it yes, there were moments that were tense and uncomfortable, but she was very open and receptive to questions. Um you know, it, it, it seemed to me to be sort of a, a side of her we hadn't seen. Did you love feel it it? it's definitely different? You know what I mean? Love it. Love her or hate her. Viewers come in with their own thoughts. It's interesting to see how they leave. It's, you know, fascinating to see what they take away from that meeting in a different way than maybe what we see when we watch it or even how the victims felt with, who were in the room. So it's very. Uh, it's interesting to see how people come in and come out of that. Mm -hmm. have you seen a lot of because right like I mean and are you shocked at like the Bravo fandom I mean they have their favorite housewives I mean there are a certain group of people that could watch this over and over listen to the two of you here today and they either hate Erica or love her and there's nothing any of us are going to say that will ever change that but then there's a lot of other people that watch and observe and do come out of it differently like, are you shocked at like the Bravo fandom the Bravo web pages, like, like you said, reading comments and you shocked at all of this. Maybe I'm not, not. I mean, I think this is an audience that really watches. It's a smart audience. It's an audience that does its homework. Um, they're like private investigators. There's, they're always a step ahead. So, um, no, I'm, I'm not surprised. I think there's a real, real love of this kind of content. Um, and like I said, a smart audience really smart audience like reality tv can get a really bad rap you know what i mean but the people who sit down and watch these shows aren't just interested always in what's happening directly on the screen and that's why i think the reality community online is a 